Grownish, smartish, British. We are British, apparently. Uh -huh. I can't sing for nothing. We belong together. Go on, she was ready. Yeah, so basically, it wasn't actually someone who saw Ben's message or whatever. It's actually someone that I saw physically who hadn't seen Ben. Oh. Who then decided to say, actually, yeah, you remind me of like Corella Deville. <gasps> And um, no, connection. You can, no connection. And I thought, nah, someone's spoken this into the energy and yes. into the universe. Prophecy. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Oh, kind God. regards. No, it was, there's no, like I said, there's no malice in anything I say. It's all come from a place of love. He drops it better. He said, you look like a sexy villain. Calm, I'll take that. Cool. I don't even rate myself that, but I'll take it. You just said Corella Deville. Uh, what's, who, what did Meryl Streep play? Um, more evil people. Oh, from the, pro um, the pro Devil Wears Devil Prada. Wears Prada. Just an old lady. Meryl Streep was smoking in that thing. Are you mad? Wait, are you saying I'm smoking? Yeah. Calm yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I'm joking. <laughs> um, Joe's his wife, by the way. Oh. <laughs> and he calls her my Joe, which is no, really I cute. don't. Aww, yeah. You do. Oh yeah, for the subtitles, J O, not J O E. Man, come on. Shout out to Instagram, yeah. isn't it? This, this is my like, Joe. So this is Joe. Just that. Joe's a girl, not a dude. It's fine, Ben. It's 2021. Anything runs these days, so true, yeah, embrace yeah. it. Mm. Um, we are with a special guest, joined, joined. Uh, <laughs> with a special guest by the name of, would you like to introduce yourself? What's up, guys? I'm Miriam. How's everybody doing? We good. We good. So for those who don't know, um, mm -hmm. Miriam does a podcast called Conscious uh, Conversations, which I've been on twice. Twice, baby. <laughs> Come on, love Shout it. Shout out to Ryan in the background. Way, way. I Shout see you, baby girl. Um, you're not just a podcaster. I'm not, indeed. You, are you a boxing instructor as well? Yeah, I'm a boxing coach. I haven't finished with the titles. All right, a me. director. Yeah, go on. <laughs> That's it, Karen, I continue. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got, that's all I got. <laughs> all right, so to break it that mainly I would say, um, obviously, podding, presenting, stuff like that. Um, I'm a film director, screenwriter. I've done documentaries, adverts, films. Small, wow. small music videos. What's, what's been your proudest um, work to date? Um, I filmed my short film in April. Ooh. And it's in festivals, or it's going to be in festivals at the end of the year. You know, Inshallah like as well. Um, you that thing. film in particular, I think, would probably be my best and most heartfelt piece of work because it was my producer's story and the um, lead actress was her younger sister. So oh, it was wow. all very like tight knit and all like real, it's real, it's a There's real some story. real emotions in yeah. And it's, it's honestly like that film, I, with oh. chest. That's Even good. if it doesn't do well, it'll be out on um, like platforms next year after okay. festival season is, is finished. But you know. Um, but so film festivals is gonna yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Film it's exciting because like you said when it's heartfelt and it has substance and layers to it mm. you're invested mm -hmm. you're invested differently obviously yeah. everything that you love doing within the industry you'll always be invested in but when it's very very sentimental to someone and meaningful you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th there's a different weight that you carry with it it's a whole different and it's a lot as well like to to be given that responsibility or the honor to actually come and tell someone's story yeah. and have the family somewhat involved, whether it be acting or producing or whatever it may be, it's you almost, I can't mess it up. There's no way, it's impossible. So to be able to yeah. be there and do that and have that experience, honestly, like. And her sister tier. playing as well. Yeah, it, it. that was for me when, when, when we did rehearsals, okay? And, <laughs> Cause she didn't want to tell me that was her sister out of like bias or whatever. Mm -mm -mm. And I still ended up picking her anyways. I was like, wow, this is gonna get real. Yeah. Like shooting days got real. Like Aww. we cried on the last shooting day. It was very emotional. Yeah, that that's was sick. That's, that's exciting, man. Last, wow. yeah. So congratulations. Well is, is, is there a name for the short film? Or the, you're not out yet? the film is called Nora, which means light. Okay. And that's yeah, what yeah. you're gonna get. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Yeah. So, cause you're here. Yes. Actually, should we do the intros first? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Maybe start. <laughs> I'm Hebs. You can catch me on Instagram. I am Hebs with a Z. 
Vanderbilt the end. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. But he doesn't see it coming. I'm sorry, Bruh, every week, every Play. week. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's me, Fizz. And you can find me on Keep It Fizz. But it's just got one Z, so it's just Keep It Fizz, not Keep <laughs> <laughs> um, Miriam, do you want to let them know where you can catch you? Yes, personal, official Miriam on Instagram, and then the podcast is c.conversations podcast on Instagram. Yeah, and on yeah. YouTube, whatever. Let's go. So I'm going to switch up, guys. Ooh. Oh, we're going to do Would ah, You Rather. Uh, we are going to do Would You Rather if we have okay. time. Oh, God. But, but, <laughs> oh, God. Payback. Oh, no. Oh, Every you're going to hit me with a riddle. No. Every I knew time. it. I knew it. <laughs> I love Every riddles. time I go on her show, she likes to hit me with riddles. At, first of all, it's standard per guest. I don't care. Okay. It's overwhelming. <laughs> it's pressure, but you get all the riddles. You know how many times people have tried to hit me with riddles and I'm just there like, yeah, I got eight out of eight. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm yeah, actually a you're, G. You're, you're winning. <laughs> you're, on a, you're on a streak right now. You're so doing that too. when people give me riddles, I get overwhelmed with words. Yeah. But I just hear a bunch of words and I'm like, ah, no, no, no. Mm. Oh, then, by the way, I'm dyslexic. So if I flop. So don't. am I. Say something. <laughs> say something. i have given you very easy ones. Have you actually? <laughs> For those who don't know where this is coming from, it's because she likes to highlight that she's giving me very easy, like, entry-level ones. I'm taking a mick. Which puts a lot of pressure on me. All right, calm. Give me the pressure. I can handle it. (laughs) I'm throwing it to all of you guys. Don't worry. So you get to share the heat. All right, calm. And they are very easy, and you guys in the back can also help out. All right, so the more there is of it, the less you see. What is it? You probably know these ones anyway because you do them. Time. Time? No. Do you want me to read it one more, say it one more time? Yes, please. Don't you? Kenny, you say that one second. I, I, like know, I, I know you this. got it. Don't, 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 don't cheat. Yeah, I feel like we actually might have the used more, this. <laughs> <laughs> the more of it there is, the less you see. What is it? The sun. The more of it you see. <laughs> I can't. Wow. <laughs> the more of it there is, the You're less close. you see. I'm gonna give yeah, you Yeah, because when the sun's out, the more of it, you the more look at the sun. Age. <laughs> Your age. No. What? <laughs> all right, Kenny. <laughs> Don't know all day. It's darkness. Oh, oh that's dumb. Oh, Kenny the Cracker. <laughs> no, no, that's how you do it. It's dumb. <laughs> dumb. I'm a nerd. How dare I not understand that? This, this, this is. The less. Yeah. Ty, why are you going to say it? To level three or deeper. Deeper. It's deeper. It's Leave it at level it's, one. Yeah. It's deeper. It's deeper. Keep going, Ty. Come Keep on. Going. All right. You get me. <laughs> what has what has legs but doesn't walk? A car. I know this one. <laughs> a chair. I'm no. sure I've seen this. this <laughs> table. A table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got that as well. But I see you in a corner not saying anything. I'm chilling. <laughs> because there's a riddle about... <laughs> There's a riddle about walking and like when it runs out, it's supposed to be metaphorical for petrol and the answer's a car. So I was just trying to connect the dots. Hey. <laughs> you took it to another level. Like, it doesn't need it's to go to you the deeper, car. it's deeper. It's right. I came up with homeless the other day. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God. Levels. All right, cool. One more and then we'll move on to the Would You Rathers. Mm. What month of the year has 28 days? All of All them. Of them. Nah, you guys know are this Yeah, that one is Wait, why do people knowledge. know this? It's common knowledge, like, man. Obviously, it's literally common knowledge. No, but, but like, like initially, most... you, you start thinking, oh, oh, is it? Yeah, that's it. And then you forget. So what? Two out of three? That's calm. Which, which, what, what other one did so you get? I got table, bro. When? The same time. Because <laughs> you said chair. You went table. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> All right. So what we usually do, mm. we do a would you rather segment in the Cute. beginning. Nice. So we'll, we'll bring it in. Um, I feel like I have to ask every single person, every single guest, this question, the very inappropriate question about R. Kelly. Can I ask them? Yeah, go on. How do you guys feel about that being a signature thing? No. No, please? Keep, go, go. Thank go, you. Go so, <laughs> Miriam. Yes. This is not endorsed by... No, I'm just kidding. I'm screaming. Okay, go on. Sponsored by Heather. Uh-uh. Uh, so, would you rather... There's one that I made up because I was feeling a bit... Cheeky. Facetious that day. Feeling a bit mad. Would you rather... Mm-hmm. Bismillah. <laughs> R. Kelly mm-hmm. or Michael Jackson mm-hmm. look after your child? Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson. That was yeah. quick. Okay. What? Michael Even Jackson. Even his son. There's no proof. I mean, because he's dead. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So right now, I'd. Ignorance. Look, what's it? What's it? Yeah, ignorance. See no evil. Yeah. <laughs> Speak no <laughs> evil. <laughs> That's me right now. Yeah. <laughs> and even, what, what was the whole scandal about the. What's the place that you. Never, never, never land. Never, yeah. never land. Where he what? had his, but do you know it is a bit. Okay, it I, is. I, no, no, no. It's, it's got. It's mm. weird. It's, it's fishy. Yeah. But 
I'm not having no one piss on my child. You're yeah. right. <laughs> but if you had no. a boy, he wouldn't piss on your child because he don't like boys like that. But I mean, if it was put in front what of him, that, that, what that, that, that day he wanted to try something new. Now what? That's very unfortunate. That <laughs> <specifically> <laughs> <speaking>. <laughs> your child. What I know is what wow. I know, and what I don't know, we'll find out. Okay, fair enough. So mm. this is a question I ask people and it makes them feel uncomfortable, but it is what it is. I was too quick with that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our topic today, we're talking about faith. Um, obviously, growing up British, we always kind of go back to our childhoods nice. um, and look at, see like how everything that we've experienced in life, how it shaped us as adults. Mm. Um, so firstly, growing up, uh, I guess, were you raised in the UK? Yeah. Born? Born and raised, baby. Whereabouts? East London, east side, you know what's up. Yeah, you know. Are you from East? east? Ah, yes. <laughs> east side in the building, what's up? What, what part are you? Oh, baby, no. I'm in the East. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, this you know, funny. it's, it's a big area. Over. Yeah, we moved five times, so. That's a lot. Why did yeah. you move five times? The council just up and shifted us. Ah, mm. fair enough. Yeah. Hopefully five. small, small upgrades. Slowly. Yeah. Yeah, nice. slowly. From one estate to another. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, just Kenny, very quickly. I have a feeling the camera stopped filming. Just just for the records. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. I had a... Mm, at yeah. some point. Um, so, faith-wise, I'm going to assume you grew up as a Muslim. Yeah. Okay. Um, yourself, Ben? I was raised Christian. Raised Christian. Muslim. Okay, cool. So I want to know, really, um, growing up, how heavy was faith in your homes? Um, and really just how did it impact you? Like, how much of a focal point was it in your household growing up? So who wants to start, please? Ladies first. Well, we, we I knew well, I knew ben I loves the start. ladies first thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Gentlemen. It's 2021, isn't it? Just, so, uh, just run the thing. Run wait. the thing. <laughs> wow, okay. Are He's you going? Like, like, wait, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chivalry is dead and she killed it. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad old school. Lady should be first, but. Um, I would say, I think in my household, culture dominated more than faith did. I think faith is always, it was always there, regardless. Mm. Like, it was never anything that was <clears throat> overlooked or. Like, when Eid would come along, we knew Eid was coming along. When Ramadan was coming along, Ramadan was coming along. Do you know what I mean? Like, every Friday, mm. during my prayers, like, we we were we were taught to know who we were. But I think the driving factor in our household was mainly culture okay. over faith. Okay. Yeah. So, can you care to elaborate what that... I wanted to touch on culture and see, like... The the what, what was the percentage like when you really think about it, the ratio of culture versus religion um when you say you're more culturally led at home mm. give me an example of what that looked like um little things like maybe clothing um the way in which we spoke for example like for example weddings yeah mm. i've never been to a segregated wedding mm. ever mm. like we don't do that like as I've been. Um, it's it's interesting. A, yeah, it's very interesting. Mm. And I've heard and I've seen, but all of our weddings are very, like, skin out. Everybody, like, whether you wear a scarf or not, everyone's just dressed up, dolled up. Everyone's dancing with everybody. Everyone's enjoying because it's family. Just like. out of curiosity, in your, in your culture, um, can you take, do people take off a hijab for the wedding? Yeah. I've never, when I go Algeria, I'm Algerian, by the way. I think we've established this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I realised that, that I said it earlier. But, um, in Algeria, half the time, if if I was to take my scarf off and just walk around, mm. it would never be an issue, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, that's when the faith kind of ties in, and that's whether you want to do it or not. But weddings-wise, I've never gone to a wedding in a scarf, ever. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So, what about yourself? Is what was your what was your setup at home like? I would say similar to yours, mm. Miriam. Um, but more half and half. Mm. Um, and thinking about it now, I feel like my mum was more on the deen, so mm. on the religion, and my dad was more on cultural stuff. Mm. And so my dad was part of the family for a long time, and then he's no longer part of the family, but his influence culturally was quite strong, and there were certain things that he expected that we would abide by that were more cultural customs rather mm. than religious things. My mum was more conscious of religion, and as time has gone on, my mum, bless her, 
she's done Hajj now, she's on, her, she's on it. Like, mm -hmm. it's really, really nice to see. Mm -hmm. And she's unlearning a lot of weird stuff, stuff, weird cultural stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and understanding the Islamic sort of perspective of it. And now her sort of advice, her direction and everything comes from a place of religion, a place of faith. So was she the one that would teach, <laughs> remind you guys of prayers and Eid yes. and, you know, the first so mum, day yeah, of the year? Exactly. Kind of so mum taught us how to, to pray Salah. Mm. Um, she taught, taught us how to recite from the Quran. She taught us Inshallah. as much as she could. Um, you know, the alphabet. So I, you know, I can read things, but I can't understand Arabic. Do you know what? Right? I saw a meme. Was it you who uploaded a meme going, I can I can read Arabic, but don't ask me to don't understand me to, it. But that <laughs> translates. Slowly, slowly hear one or two words. I'm like, I know what that means. There's always the bad words as well. Like, Obviously. Hayawan and... and Hayawan. And, wow. And Sharmuta and stuff oh, like oh, that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Girl, so, what? so Sharmuta hey, is, hey, a, is hey, a hey, prostitute hey. slash slut. Hey! Hey, exactly. Look. It's Uncle always Ben's the bad words that you learn. In Arabic. In Arabic. In Arabic. Um, so mum was definitely more encouraging of that. And my mm. childhood, so the stuff that I remember from my childhood is mum making me and my brother on the weekend sit down. She'd have a cane. Sit down and recite from the Quran. Say cane. Cane, you know. Yeah, she right. had a cane. Force you a garden, ca garden cane. By force you will memorise this surah. That's it. <laughs> and then, um, What did yeah, that do for you mentally though? And did that make you, that encourage you? Or was it just like, I'm not into this? Obviously, like, we've talked about discipline before and what that looked like for <laughs> us as brown kids. You got the beats. What's yeah. your ethnicity, by the way? Bangladeshi. <clears throat> okay. Should have done a guessing game and just watch her. There is something else. Girl. Oh, we can come back to that later. Oh, Obviously, no. We, thought I was, we dig it to everyone, don't worry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, mum was definitely more encouraging that aspect of it. And my dad mm. was more about learning our cultural background. So he made us go Bengali school. Oh, my days. So I'd go to normal school, which mm. is 9 to 3. Uh, 9 to 3.30 if you're in secondary school, 8.30 to 3.30. And then from 5 to 7, Monday to Friday, we were in Bengali school. So I'm wow. fluent. I can read and write. But are you grateful for that, to be fair? To some degree, yes. It's nice to have a language what? that you can... That is amazing. It yeah. is. <laughs> and it's something that I'm definitely going to pass on to my kids. But living in the West, yeah. how much am I using it? I hear you. So it's, no, it's a shame. A it's a, it, well, a that, I don't even speak to my mum in. I speak to my mum in Bengalish. Bengalish, yes. in extra. Yeah, yes. <laughs> in Bengalish. And then even when I speak to other like sort of olders in the community, it gets all mixed up because I, I don't practice it often. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, also yeah. the kids, like my niece and nephew, growing up, they're going to school. They're learning in English. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We speak to them in English, so it's becoming a forgotten art. But it's definitely something that I want to try and maintain. I speak as much as I can. Mm. But it's it's a language that's specific to one part of the world. It's not something that's spoken globally yeah, yeah well, you like can be yeah. the interpreter at work i am yeah. i used to do I, um, I, every yeah, time i, I hear someone that struggling that i'm like this week Arabic, Arabic, yeah <laughs> yeah just speak Bengali. yeah i do it all the time even now if i see someone struggling to speak english and they're they look like they're of south asian descent i do ask them can you speak bengali most of the time they're not bengali but at least i've tried yeah <laughs> and i'll try and help out, out. Yeah. yeah and it has come it's got its benefits sometimes you can listen to conversations when they don't think you're bengali mm. and they're Oi. like oh those are the, <laughs> the best <laughs> those are the best and you're like oh. Oh. Mm. and then you come out with the bengali and they're like <gasps> you have to let them speak and speak and dig, yeah. just dig away yeah and then just turn around and go yeah yeah, I, yeah. and they're like oh. uh i'm like yeah it's too yeah. late mate it's too late so my dad was more on the cultural, cultural. stuff. Um, so he never pulled you up for prayers? No, my dad mm. wasn't very um, faith guided in that sense. Okay. Um, he definitely was more on, on the cultural customs and stuff like that and how we dress as well. Let me retract how I dress because I was a girl. Mm. I had to be culturally identifiable as a Bengali. Interesting. Yeah. What does that look like? Sorry. So our kameez, which okay. in that time going back few years ago. <laughs> um, one or two. That's one, one or two, just one or two. <laughs> Us brown kids, we wanted to blend in. We didn't want to... to that will never change. Yeah. Ever. Kids are always going to want to blend in. And when the majority or everyone else in your class is wearing English clothes and you come to school wearing your salwar kameez because your dad made you, <laughs> like, you just see, you feel a ways. Like, you stick out like a sore thumb in the mm. wrong kind of ways. Um, so I used to really resent that. Why so, in the wrong so kind of way? 
Because because of the assumptions and and the the stereotypes people put on you. It's a bit like back in the day, being like being Caribbean was more glamorous than being African. African yeah, so yeah, coming yeah. into your your attire wouldn't have been as glamorous as in right now, where everything's popping. Yeah, and everyone's proud to be African, and mm. now it's just like okay, cool. I, I kind of like I love the attire. Yeah, yeah. it's it's cultural appropriation mm. and what what's yeah. popping at the time, and definitely Bengali culture probably wasn't popping. It's <laughs> the same no, way it Arabic wasn't. culture. Yeah, wasn't. and like you know, you'd get funny looks and stuff. So there was there were definitely think it was I would say it was split. My mum definitely pushed the more faith side of it, and my dad pushed the cultural. Okay, what about yourself, Ben? Uncle Ben, cheese and was it? There was no, there was no faith or spirituality in the household at all. Really? So you're fully culturally led? Yeah, that was the, so was no the church. only thing. The only time we went to church is when my grandmother came over, and I was a teenager by that time. And she was like, you're not, conf you're not confirmed? You're not, okay, we have to do that. And I got confirmed in a church when I was, I don't know, 13, 14. And, and, was, and was that done just for the sake of pleasing your grandma. grandma? That was just for grandma. Mm. That was the only, only reason we did that. My dad didn't practice. My mum didn't practice. Mm. It's only now that my dad has, is born again. Okay. So he is now an active practicing Christian. Mm. But um, no, nah, there wasn't uh, a... Uh, <coughs> there wasn't a push for that. It was all culture. It was all Yoruba, Nigerian. It was all of that push. Mm -hmm. So you had the food. And you did, had you the did you feel any way about it? Like, did you feel like you wanted faith, but it wasn't, or you just didn't know what you're missing out on? Cause didn't you, know. You didn't went to church a couple of times and I, I, I went after my grandmother. Did you go to the youth centers like um I went like to Kenny. Uh, Sunday school by myself. Play <gasps> table tennis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kenny went to Sunday school to play table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh but God. no, there, there was a few times I went to went to Sunday school by myself and went to the congregation in church and I went to a couple of churches maybe you know trying to find yourself, mm -mm. but it just never it never hit with me. It mm. Just didn't hit, and it's it's now a reflection of how I am now. It's just spiritually there is something there, but but you I don't subscribe to a particular way. No, of I, I think there's too much conflict in my head as to mm. which way I love I love the Arabic and the Muslim concept and ways mm. but I, I but I also love some things about Christianity mm. Mm. so where do I, I I love things about bu Buddhism mm. Mm. So there's a lot there's a lot you can learn from different faiths because yeah. mm. they share similar foundations and but they have differences yeah. I think the time. stories within the the religious um, literature are amazing mm. and there's so much connection between them mm. that's what I've like hold on wait Jesus was also in... So the Abrahamic faiths, the, the yeah. same prophets, pretty yeah. much. Um, same that's, story. What, yeah. that's what I'm yeah. interested yeah. in. But the actual practicing, and then you have to have the rules, and then I don't know if I'm ready for all of it's that. It's more the history. Ladies, I feel like a revert's coming on yes, here. Yes, I know. Yeah. I was oh, going to say, like, yeah. do you want to take your shahada? Guys, I think I'm ready. I'm going to change my name from Ben to Bilal. <laughs> no, I'm this done. is my moment. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so I grew up in a household of culture and faith, mm. but I couldn't tell the difference because mm. it was so warped. Yeah. Um, or sorry, not warped, blended. Yeah, I don't yes. know whether warped's right yeah. words. That I didn't, I only as an adult or growing up that I was able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I just assumed, oh, this is all faith. This mm. is all faith. Because they use the word like haram or they use things to indicate like um, this isn't okay or Good acceptable. Bad, yeah. But they, it's only when I grew up, I was like, hold up, wait. This, this isn't actually faith. This is culture. Yeah. Um, for example, boys can date, but girls can't. Mm. Islamically, none of none us of you, can be yeah. committing any sort of like sin in that sense. It doesn't. There isn't like an exception in a rule where actually men can spread their seed and gallivant, mm. while us women have to sit home and be timid. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was culturally led. Mm. But growing up, I thought, okay, I guess this is what faith is teaching me. And mm. obviously, when you're young, we inherit what's given to us. Mm. And to an extent, we don't question it until we reach a certain age where we're like, all right, I'm going to school, I'm reading, I'm learning new things. Let me question or let yeah. me, not challenge, but let me understand more. And then that's where I was able to establish. It's the beginning of your maturity. Mm. Yeah. But it's unfortunate that some people are still in their grownish age and they still don't challenge yeah. anything. Grownish keyword. Listen. No, it's like, true. Are just, you grown? Yeah, or is your age just grown? At this point. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. But then like, that's right. And I feel yeah. like some people want to live with like bl like blinkers on. Yeah. Because yeah. it's easier to just go, do you know what? I'd rather just live in ignorance and not be given any rules and regulations. 
um, or just think I'll pick and choose what I want rather than challenge them and learn. And exactly. Even seeing it as rules and regulations, you should ha you, you should question that. Yeah. Mm. Why why are you why do people think faith or religion or whatever and automatically think rules and regulations? Yeah. Look into it. Learn for yourself. Then you can make your decision. Yeah. yeah. There so is people, a structure but, but with it though. There is. It, it's supposed to be a way of life, and it's and it's, it's to better lifestyle. you. It's to yeah, protect it's you, it's not yeah. They're th they're they're there for your for your protection. They're there to to guide you to the right path. They're not there to say you can't enjoy a life. Oppressed woman. Yeah. If you know the <laughs> stories behind it and how they came about, or the reason why that thing was in place, or whatever it may be, mm. you won't see it as a restriction. Yeah. That's uh, so. For example, yeah. alcohol being forbidden in Islam. I'm fine with that. No, no, but the reason, as in like, people go, oh, but don't you feel oppressed? Like you don't drink, isn't that like, boring? Yeah, isn't yeah. da 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 da? Mm. Like, why don't you just relax and just enjoy? But when you understand, like the state of mind you need to be in when you pray, the state, how long alcohol takes to come out your system, all those kind of mm. things, you don't want to even compromise that. Mm. Yeah. But then people just like, oh, I'm so restricted. I can't do this. I can't. Have that. But understand why, like, for example, having sex out of wedlock mm. isn't just simply because Oh, your body count numbers. I don't know. It's because also you're exchanging energies. You're also exchanging, like you're you're taking on a trauma. Them, yeah. You're taking on like um, you have like a almost like a nice mm. lens of the world. Yeah. With every heartbreak of every ending of a relationship or situation, whatever situation you go through, whatever journey, you're taking on now that person's. Not to that, but you now like you might have trust issues. You mm. might have abandonment issues. Yeah. You might have. Um, so many different things whether someone cheated on you someone deceived yeah, you whether someone that. escaped you there's so you. much psychology so when you finally it. meet someone yeah. you're just like I can't trust you yeah. mm. and it's not that person's fault but it's because we we're, so, we're so exposed do you know what I mean so mm. to, to me understand before you shut down yeah. also, I'm not supposed to see you by the way I mean, and you too, yeah. if you want to take that <laughs> but, um, but there's a lot of people who go, yeah, yes, yeah. so I've seen in the media, like, how Islam's like, and I've seen, like, you know, how, like, oh, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the church is all corrupt. Nah, B, that's, that's criminal-minded individuals who have chosen a faith to represent their, to, to justify to their justify behavior. Yeah. 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 And if, like I said before, if Muslims were on this bomb thing, everyone would be gone. Because we're in a room finished. now. How many Muslims? Do you guys feel safe? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, yes. Please, well, if, if we believe, safe. if we believe the right in the jihadist kind of vibe, brethren, yeah. none of you, any, London would not be safe. Any extreme is a danger to uh, to all life. So mm. exactly. yeah, and and there's certain behaviours that people have that transcends things like faith, culture, age, gender, moral values. There's there's good and bad mm. in every walk of life. Mm. Um, and it's always the bad people that really give a whole group of people a label yeah, that, that's negative. Yeah. 100%. But I feel like also that is also common knowledge or even common sense to know that there's good and bad in everything. It is, but it's that's easy. Some people also, lack IQ. It? No, they, it's, the you're purposely choosing to want to believe that. It's selective ignorance. Yes. You want to come and take that because mm. it might fit your lifestyle or your agenda or whatever it may be. And mm. then you run with it. And then people think it's excusable because they think, oh, actually, well, there's good and bad and da 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 and be. Like, everyone knows that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, there's good and bad in everything. We've seen how the world works. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have access to everything. But it's just, it's, it, it becomes more understanding when it's their race or their faith. Yeah. Mm. Like, for like example, Christians will know, like, oh, the KKK isn't a true representation exactly, of Christianity. Yeah. Because um, there's not a race issue, yeah. but then people will be like, "Oh, so Muslims are out here killing?" Or like, there's, That's true. you know, th and it's just like, wait, wait, it's the same thing that applies. It's no different. But that's what I'm, people don't want to know or don't want to understand until it affects them. Yeah, and yeah. that's the issue. Yeah, and no, I agree. Um, in regards to your upbringing, do you did you ever feel any pressures? I mean, I guess for you, you probably I don't know if you did, but. I guess in your case, it could be culturally, but did you feel any pressures growing up to be a certain way, whether it's because you're a woman, whether it's because you're a Muslim or a Christian or a certain culture that you have to live up to? 100%. Yeah, of course. All the time. What would you say like is like, the, obviously, because we can be here for, for days. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's enough food to last us, but <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got time for that. But if you guys can think about what stands out that's quite poignant to, to your life growing up that was most pressure for you, I guess. It's being a woman, it's being the firstborn daughter mm. and the pressures that was the expect. I won't say pressures, the expectations that were placed on me being the eldest daughter, firstborn and eldest daughter. Mm. So I became my parents' caretaker, my siblings' caretaker, my oh, parents' therapist, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my siblings' 
second mother. There's a yeah. lot of, a lot yeah, of there firstborns was... right now going, oh my God. Yeah. I'm too. with you. I'm going to piggyback off that because <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. And there, there was a lot on me for being the girl. Yeah. Um. So not only did I have to take care of all of these people all of a sudden and continue to because not only was I looking after the family that I'm in now, but I was being primed to take care of my future family, mm. his his family, all of that. So that's the, the kind of expectation put on me. Um, Is that from a c- cultural perspective or was, like, was, that it, ever, was, was it ever like cultural. a- cultural. Okay, cool. Definitely cultural because we've spoken about this before in Bengali um, culture, the girl, when she's married, she moves in with her husband and his family. Yeah. And she mm. now takes care of his family. So there was a lot of expectation on so that. So they were training you to be that woman. Yeah, to be that woman. <laughs> I flopped really badly. <laughs> now they I leave mean, me alone. I don't think you flopped. I think, no, I like, think he just didn't tolerate certain behaviors. I did, exactly. So I'm completely self-sufficient, but I don't tolerate th- those expectations. You ain't no pushover, boo. No, mm. I'm not. I'm not a doormat. But... Um, <laughs> Apart, along with that, there was also the whole upholding the honor of your family. Okay. Yeah. And that came down to how you dressed, yeah. whether I could cut my hair, whether I could color my hair. Mm, wow. There was a big oh, yeah. deal about that's, coloring my hair. That's yeah, yeah. quite intense. Yeah, coloring your hair was seen as horish behavior. Okay. What behavior? I'm trying to think. behavior. Oh, wow. Did I have that? Was it, was it horish or was I just too young? I think certain colours are like, oh, no, 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 no. It belongs yeah. to the streets. So I went, <laughs> yeah, I colours. fully went like bright red. I was like, nah. You're a rebel well. about cool I, with me. I definitely was. I think I'm the black sheep of the family because I pushed every boundary there is hey. there to be. Um, but things like, yeah, getting piercing. So getting mm. more than my one lobe piercing was like, what have you done? Mm. I'm like, wow. oh, you're acting like I killed someone. All I did was get <laughs> yeah, my yeah, cartilage it's, it's, it's all alien to them, mm. isn't it? Yeah, but it's culture. Mm. It's like, oh, how is, what are people going to say? What are they going to say it's when they the look at you? And yeah. 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 you know, um, so there was a lot of that, what are people going to say? Yeah. Expectation and pressure put on me. Mm-mm-mm. So a lot of the achievements that I had in my young life at that time, like going to college, going to uni, all of that, I was, one of the first in my family to mm. do those things. Yeah. The reality is the first child is literally like the guinea pig. Yeah. We're going to test out everything, your trial and error. By the time yeah. we get to the last child, they're like, do you know what? Bond this. Yeah, just, just get on with it. <laughs> do whatever. They're do alive, whatever they're fed. Class, go. But it's <laughs> a lot of pressure. And I feel like had I been a boy, yeah. I wouldn't have had the same pressure. So me yeah, going to uni, different. it was yeah. expected, go to uni, but not because they wanted to see me successful in my field. Mm. They wanted to make me this um a stronger candidate a stronger candidate for a marriage cv mm. like oh look at her she got a b engine this and she got yeah, a master's yeah. in this and stuff like that it wasn't like oh my daughter wants to excel in her career let's support her education let's get her out there let's support her in any way we can if that was me as a boy going i want to go to uni and do it, i'd get all the support there would be no expectation on household duties there'd mm. be no expectation on like taking care of your mom being there to have, like there is a little bit like mm. you do the more sort of like maybe taking your mum shopping so you basically car, felt that your main pressures was the fact that you're a, a because i was a, woman, a girl, a girl yeah. and the firstborn mm. what about yeah. yourself Miriam? um i agree in terms of obviously being firstborn you you're basically everyone's mother and mm. more right mm, mm. um i would say i never really felt a massive amount of pressure aside from education okay and i think that's a very being first generation, like, especially having African parents, boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then as, on top of that, I didn't want to do anything academic. I went straight into film. <laughs> you basically, so if, you can I, dis- if you can disappoint me in the worst way, I went, <laughs> that one, <laughs> let me have it. Not a lawyer, what? architect, engineer. What my dad would, he would do anything for me to be a teacher right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything. Don't but, worry, you're schooling people to be directors. Yeah. 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 You know, you're you know, setting the bar. But um, yeah, I would just... Even me, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I was a bit of a twat growing up anyways. Like, wouldn't really go to school, would be bunking. Is that you? Extra, what? I was all over the gaff. Growing really? up in East London was a mess. Oh, please, <laughs> it was girl. a mess. Children, but, um, please go to school. Yeah, yeah. stay in school. Don't <laughs> take any risk. Don't do truancy. Like, yeah. Truancy? That's what it's called, right? No idea. I was, I was too learning. perfect. Depends uh-uh. what you're learning outside of school. So yeah, um, so your so your main pressure was education. Basically. Yeah, academic stuff, just mm. doing well. Firstborn, um, I never, I ended up going to uni. Never wanted to go to uni. What did you study? Um, film, film practice. Okay, wicked. Yeah, yeah. So um, I remember trying to find the apprenticeship X, Y, and Z, thinking, yeah, I'm not, I'm bond this uni, I'm not on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, okay, I need to tell my dads because <laughs> my mum really like like 
like bless my mum, she's just supporting no matter what. Bless them. My dad is like, you need education, bruv. You need to figure it out. And I'm with it. I'm here for it. None of my parents ever went to uni. They've never had that luxury. So having... So it's kind of pressure on you to, to, f to fulfill their... their yeah, they never got to which yeah. honestly, um, going to uni and doing a field that I never thought I would ever do in a like academic establishment wasn't as bad as I thought mm. at all because I genuinely enjoyed my course because it was, um, well, it's 90% practical, 10% theory. So I'm Amazing. not out here typing essays that could never be me. But um, <laughs> I remember the day I sat my dad down um, after I got my A-level results and mm. I was like, I was like, I'd, I'm, I'm not going to uni. Like, I don't want to go. And he said, why? And I was like, I'm trying to explain to him, like, I don't need to go to uni for this and da 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 and there's X, Y, and Z options. And what he cried. Way? So the thing oh. is, we spoke about this. We spoke about yeah. this briefly um, on one of our um, audio episodes, podcasts, yeah. Yeah, yeah, about education and whether it's a fundamental necessity anymore these days. Mm. I wanted my degrees in journalism, and I wanted to do um, an internship and work my way up. Right? They they could they couldn't begin to comprehend it. Yeah. Mm. What do you mean no education? They don't, because mm. they, they don't understand. They've never that. even seen, let alone heard. Because it was it was still an, a new thing. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. a known like. Yeah, but do you blame? You can't I don't blame, blame them, them at all. Yeah, I don't blame can't. them, but they don't understand actually by me being in an apprenticeship or an internship or whatever it is. I'm I, gaining I, more I'm valuable I'm probably going to progress a lot faster. You're ahead. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going to finish uni and then I have to take 10 steps back. And I'm yeah. still going to do and what the, my guy did. On top of that, you're in, in debt. I got debt. <laughs> you know how much debt I'm in? It's actually a joke. Yeah. Oh, I'm not so, so Ben, what about yourself? What was your <laughs> main <laughs> pressures growing up? I just up? finished paying off, man. Oh, God. Um, At least you paid yours off, bro. Wait, wait. Still still how going. are you? If you don't mind me asking. 35 next month. Okay. Just so I have a time scale in my head of how long it's going to take. You got some time, 11 bro. years. Mm. It took 11 years. That's insane. Were you making overpayment? No. He's just he's just on he's just on monies. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow, yeah. Remind, yeah. remind. So you're on yeah, I did. Yeah. I don't even I don't even want I to went think when it the the car was it three grand so per year. Yeah. My yeah. wife went when it was one thousand two hundred. Yeah. I went when it just turned three grand, and then yeah, I just finished paying it off. Congrats, man. Yeah. I think you should treat us all to Nando's now. <laughs> <laughs> that extra bit of Cheeky money coming Nando's. in. I get sucked into something else. Um, okay, fair mm. enough. What, what was the question? Culturally, what was the main thing that you felt pressured Oh, up? yeah. And I, th I think it's a piggyback of what you were both saying. Um, yes, there was a pressure. The firstborn being a... And I was the, the first boy out for a very long time. It was only girls or no, no children. And I think it was just a pressure to be able to set the bar at a certain level mm. to be able to show all of the rest of the um my Community. cousins and everything yeah. like, what was what you were <laughs> supposed to do so now you'd be looking at oh yeah why can't you ben's got this this and this and i feel sorry you. for them Your yeah, yeah i must feel sorry for them because it's like well he went to university you should be doing the same it's like yeah. no, no 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 follow yeah. your own path we have yeah. cousins that didn't like us because we didn't know that we'd be unknowingly compared yeah mm. you in the yards. yeah I but look at heba look at zena we're oblivious we're like oh my god cousins why don't you love us we were just trying to get <laughs> no, through and just do i was comparing yeah. myself to my parents so it was like yeah. right go to university find your wife um when you're 25 get married and that was what my goal was. same i followed my parents I goals. that was my it just template. didn't work out and then mm. You know, you, you just go through life and you try and get those things. You know, we've talked about I've made mistakes and flopped years and had to retake and whatever. Mm. Um, but you get there in the end. So there was a sort of pressure to be able to do that. Do you feel like your parents also felt the cultural pressure to raise you as this definitely. great man I still from a young it. age? I still feel it now. Mm. You definitely feel it. Mm. And you would know this as well. And you would know this. I don't know about... Uh, your um, situation. I think it's probably a, a unanimous yeah. decision as minorities. <laughs> no, when you get, when you get, ma <laughs> when you get married, there is, it's a show. It's not just a show for, it's a show, it's a, it's a show for your parents to show this is what my offspring have been able to achieve. Yeah, mm. look at the success. Look, yeah, They so found a spouse and look at how much we've spent because they earn this much now. So then it's like, uh, you get to, the wedding and there are these lists of i want to say demands requirements yeah, that have to be done yeah. in order for you to feel like and i just question them all it's like why why and, am I and, doing and that? the reality is the answer is because 
it is what it is. They don't. Yeah. They can't really give you a solid answer. answer. It's tradition. It's tradition. I said, it's tradition. I said no. It's tradition. Yeah. I said yeah. no to ninety yeah. percent. I said no. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And then we had one. We have to prostrate in front of the my wife's father. He didn't know about it. I have to prostrate, and I was like, oh yeah, we'll do that one. And there were some other things about carrying my wife over the threshold. How did how did the, um, your father-in-law <coughs> feel about that? He was he like, was just like. What are you doing? Where is he originally Ima- from? He's, he's white. He's English. Is it? Okay. Mm. So then it was like me, all of my family were mm. at, just got in front of the top table yeah. and we're li- just lie on the floor. Yeah. It's like, like, this is what happening? we do to show our appreciation. And no one knew what we were going to do. You didn't warn him beforehand? No, nah, because I didn't know what I was going to do. But a lot, no. of, a lot of um, African cultures do that mm. um, for elders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As so soon when as the elder comes, you're on the ground. Yeah, yeah. so you when bow, I go to see respect, my yeah. aunts or I go to see my uncle. But a whole the... row of men in front of a white guy, he's like, I called the ambulance, are they okay? Like, like am I in trouble? But to be perfectly fair, he... We all got up light. That was really light. Now we put on, yeah. put on Agbada. We put on uh, my wife put on a gala, and it was that That's was lovely. light. Aww. It was light. Did you enjoy that though? Yes, that was the best part. I like dressing up and all that. No clothes. So that was light. If anything that they got on my wedding was light. Mm. We had uh, we had two separate, not two separate. We had a mixture of meals. So we had jollof rice. We had uh, what was it? I don't know. E- egg bono soup, everything, yeah. and then we had like a traditional roast and all that. So it was a mixture. Wait, best of both worlds. Yeah, like we that. had days. Yeah. Like Everyone, nice. you want to have a good time. Yeah. So I would. I would have did a mash up on my plate. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. The gravy would have been slapped on everything. Yeah. Everything <laughs> on one plate. You want and it's, it's a good vibes, isn't it? That's mm. good. That's good. What about um, your family heads? Both. I had. I had the pressure of the culture and and the Islamic point of view. Um, I think my biggest thing was our parents really scared to lose ident- our identity. Yes. Yeah. So they had this thing that we're going to come here and we're going to turn into straight up like proper Brits. Like, yeah. As in like, yeah. what are you talking about? I'm not from Egypt. What? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and, like, and like having fish and chips overnight. So they felt this need to like overemphasize culture and what we eat, what how we think and what we choose to do. Even degrees that are alien to them. They were just like, no, 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 no. Mm. Um, but I think my biggest thing was I guess the whole girl and guy thing, not even interacting with a guy on a on a social level. Mm. So if I worked with you, which I did work with you when we were younger, if I was to see you in the streets, I shouldn't be saying hello to you. I should mm. be just carrying on walking like wow. this. They're like, as soon as you leave, shout out to Kyle if he ever watches this podcast. Um, <laughs> he was my media partner for three years. And my mum said to me, I tried to introduce him, like even like just his name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, mum, but we work together. He's my, he's my, he's my colleague. She's yeah. like, uh, well, the minute you leave the gate, you split ways. I'm like, but we're heading to Hammersmith together. <laughs> and she's like, well, you cross the road. Yeah. Because wow. if, what if people see you? What would they say? And yeah, rumors yeah. do. I remember once I was on the bus stop with my cousin, Chinese whispers. Yeah, the way we have got a man. No, no, no. The way she we were having sex in public, yo. Oh my <laughs> like, God. Not literally, but as in, <laughs> like, crazy. it got to an extreme, like, oh my God, she was a man. Oh, he was touching her. Oh my God, they were very close. Oh my God, I think they were kissing. Like, <laughs> that was my cousin. We don't swing what? that way. We don't, we don't swing that way. I know some people do cousins, but not, uh-uh. not in this household. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I think on the Islamic point of view, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> no, I looked at Kenny's face. <laughs> Kenny's prices, it's okay. Oh, um, but f- on a faith point of view, there was a lot of forced stuff. My auntie was really good at explaining why we do things. Mm. My parents were very good at telling me to do it. Yeah. Mm. And that's it. You don't question it, you just do it. So every- I think everything child, was either it? like hellfire or, or heaven. heaven yeah. yeah. There was no like, <laughs> this is why it's a beautiful thing. So my, my auntie used to read us prophet stories growing up. Right. So I used to love that. So our mm. bedtime stories were, oh, prophet Noah, you know Jesus, everything, and I used to be like, "Oh my God!" Hold on, so wait. Noah was a prophet. Yeah. yeah. Who else was a prophet? That's Moses, the... Abraham, uh, David, David yeah. Jacob. Sick boy. There's, that's that's the things I'm, I'm interested in. All of them. I'll give you my son's book. It's a whole yeah. big book of stories. That's good, yeah. Man. No, that's yeah. Good. So my son has. So I've inherited the same thing that my auntie does, cool. and I read my son prophet stories. I like that one for bedtime. Like that. But and he'll choose which story, like yeah. which prophet do you want to learn about today. Or yeah, which story do you want to hear again? And he'll be like, I want to know about this. And mm. like, to the, yeah, we, that's kind of the thing. So I grew up kind of feeling quite frustrated about faith. So as much as I love faith and it's it's part of, it is my identity. Mm. It is what runs through me. Mm. Um, 
I used to pray disgruntledly. Like, I used to fake pray. <laughs> I, so, guys, hear this, yeah? Not fake pray. I used to fake pray. Hear this. I'm always like, Heba, go up and pray. Heba, yeah. go up and pray. I'm like, mm, I don't want to yeah. pray. I'd sit at the edge of the bed. Rather than pray half-hearted, I'd sit yeah. in the bed. And then on the floor above, yeah. I'd go like this every now and then. No! <laughs> they think I've done that, that too. They think I've, I've, um, I've, I've put, what's the word? Just to uh, kneel down to prostrate. Yeah. Prostrate. prostrate. So sometimes your yeah. knee hits the floor in it, so you yeah. have to hear a... Little noise. Little dunk. I, I used to sit there watching these things or watching I'm whatever. Yeah. I'm like playing snake kind of on my phone. What? It's because we were taught religion with fear rather than with love. Because it wasn't like, I was never told yeah. like, Heba, do you know when you pray, you're this close to God? Heba, do you yeah. know when you pray, your sins are forgiven? Do you know when you pray, this is an opportunity you're having to speak direct to God, conversations be vulnerable? Yeah. I was told, get up and pray now or else. Mm. Or hellfire. I got beatings. Yeah, there yeah. was no explanation. So, so I would go out of my way and be so stubborn. I'd be like, yeah. But you know, they raised you how they were raised. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. what's inherited and, behavior. And on yeah. top of that, they're raising you in a foreign land. Yeah. yeah so, it's, so it's even harder. They're 100%. doubling down on yeah. what they need to yeah. do. So. Exactly. Because again, it's the fear of losing identity. Yeah. They're yeah. trying to tighten that up by force. And the culture that they came with is in a time capsule. Mm. It didn't progress. We've spoken about this before <laughs> as well. My parents so are living in the 80s still. Yeah, right? they're still living in the 80s oh, well, Egypt where culture was a certain way. But when you realistically when you go back to visit your home countries it's progressed, it's progressed. So cultures yeah. changed so much the kids, yo. yeah they're down, <laughs> with, not down everything's with the completely different but the way we're raised over here is like yeah. oh no 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 it's back in the 80s back they're in trying the 70s, to hold on to everything yeah yeah so my question to you guys how do you feel like now as an adult in your grownish age do you consider like on a ratio of faith and culture where does it what takes presidency to you now faith Muslim yeah. first, always. Yeah. Everything else secondary, everything else is unimportant. Yeah, I had this conversation actually a little while ago <laughs> and um, we were talking about labels mm. and I really despise labels. Like, I don't know what beef I have with labels, but I just don't... What, I just, lab what label would you, would, would you think of now when I ask this question? This is what I'm going to say to mm. you, yeah? So I've always said, I will never ever take on a label except for the fact that I'm a Muslim woman. That's it. Mm. Because I genuinely believe I could have been born in anybody, any culture, whatever, mm. and I would still end up being Muslim. Mm. I genuinely believe it. Okay. So even though I grew up um, top heavy on culture, in my life now, it's flipped. Mm. And does it apply to your household as well? Do you feel like your parents also reflect the same thing? Um, I think or the older that name. they get, they're mm. a bit more on it. But my parents will always be very much... Culture, yeah, <laughs> because because of the 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 history and the bloodline, I like, felt the energy there. Yeah, because like even being African and like you know your tribes, like we we come from a tribes of leaders. Like our name mm. means something. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So a there's there's so much that comes with it when mm. when you know who you are and your history. Yeah. Um. So they're very patriotic. Not not is it patriotic? Yeah. 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 They're very patriotic when it comes to who they are, and they very much will show that. Mm. But I think. In their hearts, their faith will always go further. Mm. Mm. Okay. <coughs> All about yourself, Liz. Yeah, uh, Muslim, Muslim first. Yeah, it's something that... How I've important is culture to you? So unimportant to me. Okay. I fight a lot of it with black. I would disagree with a lot. I, <laughs> the reason why? the reason why I'm a black sheep. Because some of the, the um, cultural custom, like we talked it's about... It's conflicting with Islam. It's conflicting with Islam. It's become merged. Mm. So I was going to ask a question earlier, like what is... What is a practice within your community that is mixed cultural and religious? And mm. they try to say you have to do this because it's religious. Um, one of the things that me and my brother were forced to do as kids and we couldn't understand was when, when you go and greet someone older, obviously you give your salams like assalamu mm. alaikum. Yeah. But certain members of my mum's side of the family expected us to go bow down and touch their feet. And you thought that was Islamic? Uh, so for a long time, mm. I didn't know. And yeah. then as I started to question things, I was mm. like, you shouldn't, yeah. Hold Islamic on a second. Not. This mm. is not Islamic. Mm. Yeah. You shouldn't be yeah, prostrating down yeah. to anyone. Yeah. Like, what is this? And mm. so m me and my brother, I think this is when we were in our early teens, mm. we started to really rebel against it and go, this isn't, this isn't Muslim. Like, <laughs> what are you doing, mum? This is not Muslimic. <laughs> it's not Muslimic, stop <laughs> it. And she was like, oh, but you know, your uh, auntie and uncle will get upset if you don't do it. I was like, well, I'm upset for having to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to do so, it. So I think, sorry to interject, with, with Ben, the fact that in your culture you bow down, like my dad was kissing the hand thing. Um, I would do it, 
even but I wouldn't I'd know my intentions yeah well, do but, it out of but respect. when it when yeah, it's just was, I don't want to upset them if, it, if, it, if it's that much to them but when mm. you're younger you're like bun this what no am I doing but that? but also because they were, it wasn't a sign of like me respecting you and like I said salams first and then I came and gave you a hug and maybe did that mm. it was it had to be a part of me giving salam mm. and I was like this okay. is wrong it's this is so, really wrong yeah interlocked. so me and my brother rebelled so hard we were like we're not gonna do it we're not gonna do it and my like, aunt five. yeah my aunt <laughs> did five. say to no <laughs> yeah That's so like, and it was just it was just really weird to us yeah mm. and then like now that I'm a bit older now that I've done a little bit more research into the history of Bangladesh and how they came to be and mm. you know Mm. you know who we are as a people historically speaking Bangladesh was a Hindu country mm. um, so it's a lot of the cultural customs that we have are deeply rooted in Hindu religious which is customs which is Islam. very conflicting against Islamic mm. customs mm. so okay. that's where me and my brother were like no nah, we're not having it and we did have quite a few arguments with my mum because my mum was like you're mm. embarrassing me in do you know what I'm not arguing of I really <laughs> I really feel you can build a whole community because a lot of there's a lot of um, Bengalis that I know yeah it's even guys who are like I'll never marry a Bengali girl because they they fear they have the same feeling that you hold and mm. I feel like there's a whole there's a, there's a little Listen, little market there. Little bubble hit me up, of people. Those that are similar. You're gonna start a cult. I'm gonna. I don't want to start a cult. <laughs> Not a that's cult. weird. <laughs> and no, 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 no. The thing is, I'm proud of yeah, yeah, my heritage. heritage. Yeah. I'm proud of the struggles that the country went through to maintain its independence and to hold its language. Mm. But there's certain cultural customs that don't make sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, when they're in direct conflict, and that's that's where I was like, nah, nah, nah. We need to stop this. And we did upset our uncle and aunt. They were, they were a lot older than my, uh, than my mum. So she was like, oh, even worse, mate. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're really old school. But they, were, the they, were, they were like, you embarrass in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the honour? Um, but I'm glad we did because mm. now they know. Yeah. Mm. Also, no, no, but as in not, as in they know <laughs> they that we're not going to do it. Yeah. As in they've now learned yeah. Islamically do you get that was wrong. Do you get invited? Yeah, heck yeah. Okay. They still love me. Okay. For now. For now. <laughs> Always gonna love me. <laughs> me and my black sheepness. <laughs> um, I'm guessing Ben, yours would be culture. How did you ever know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to make assumptions. No, yeah, it would be definitely the culture. Do you think that's going to change as you get older, similar to your pops? Yeah, I'm going to lean more into it. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah, the culture, Ca yeah. Caleb has to know about where he's from. Yeah. He has to know. He's here, so he knows about here. Mm. No, but as far as faith, do you see yourself, <coughs> like, see how your dad became a newborn? A reborn, a newborn. Born again. Born, born again. again. <laughs> newborn, reborn. Listen, listen, this is really rude now, today. Is that three Clearly. Old? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. No, don't, don't, no disrespect to Pops. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> newborn. Um, <laughs> Can we say revert? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Born again. I don't know. I've never, I've taken a lot of my personality from my mum. Okay. And she has not touched religion Interesting. in a while. It's one of those things that, we won't know. Like we, we, yeah. we can aspire to be better Muslims. Yeah. yeah, and household has a very big influence on you as well. Mm. Yeah, and Joe is not religious. Yeah. Oh, is her family quite religious? They go. They actually go to church and they sing in choirs. Oh, wow. wow. So they are. They More are. Involved. Yeah, That's but I don't know about the. I don't know about the, the rest of us. We just we're just out here, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Basically, he, he's going to end up joining like um, the Muslim. Um, what are they called? I would be. I'll do it. I don't. I wouldn't force anyone else in my family to do it. If okay. I was to the nation of Islam, that's it. What well, like <laughs> no, Michael Max? You're gonna end up being. Oh, if I come in with a bow tie and and some thick glasses, then you know yeah. what's up. You've done the thick glasses. Some we caps see the bow tie. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, you're halfway there. You've got the beard. You've got yeah. the hair. <laughs> I when I went to say salam alaikum. No. When I went to, when I went to <laughs> that's um, what it sounds like on you. Saudi Arabia, they they thought I was Muslim. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. Yeah. Your face would fit there. <laughs> face no, with all due respect, I mean there. everyone fits there because it's there's no, it's there's no, no, there's no race. racial yeah, racial yeah, yeah. discrimination, yeah. or there yeah. shouldn't be racial discrimination. That place is there. is so good to go to, so nice as well. Yeah, that was the first time I've ever had a divide. So single, you go to this side of the restaurant. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Like, no, <laughs> Tell us you're single there. about your single. Yeah. About saying you're single. Yeah, go to that side of the restaurant. You go in there. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who don't know, in Saudi. You have like fun fairs for families, fun fair for singletons, and it's it's all like segregated. I think it's, it's all halal. It's all halal, but it's probably quite corrupt as an overall country. <laughs> but hey ho, they do the most in there. Yeah, the people are living there. I didn't mind. Life. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind for um, a short period of time. It's cool. So for me personally, I 
I'm very much faith led. So it's annoying because a lot of uh, Muslim men who are practicing mm. will be like, oh, you're not very practicing, are you? Because I'm not covering. But then to me, you're, if I see you're very culturally driven, I'm not, I'm not intrigued. I'm yeah, not impressed. Yeah. I'm not like, you haven't got me. I'm more interested if you're Islamically led mm. yeah. because I feel like there's a lot of cultural values that we've inherited that don't benefit my faith or my purpose on this earth. Mm. There's beautiful things about culture that I would like to embrace. Um, but there's other things where I want that my household to be led by faith. Yeah. So you're, you go in to, I don't know, like taking off a hijab for a wedding to get all lit doesn't, shouldn't take presidency over your salah, like your right, prayer. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I, I, no. Segregated, pre- segregated weddings, by the way, they're actually quite lit. Yeah. Everyone tells me it's a vibe. So I when, I first, when I first heard no, about it. No, 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 no. Yeah. One second, can I explain to you how, uh, have you been to a few? Yeah, I've been to one. All right, it depends on the culture yeah. as well. Okay. Um, so basically, the ones that I've been to, it's been like, so the husband comes in mm. and like he's in a room like filled with the men and women and he does a little intro, whatever, whatever. Then they split ways. Mm. The hijabs go off. The dresses are out. The Boy, skin's yeah, out. Yeah. My girls are raving it up. Mm. I think the guys don't enjoy it because the men are like, all right, so what? Like, man, them rave, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> We can't so take our clothes off. What are men going to do, bruv? They're yeah, just going to sit, it. talk, they're, they're just eat, doing and the keep same. it The yeah. women are living the best life. I went to like an Iraqi Shia wedding. Nice. Litty, I was like, I was expecting because when, when you see them with the hijab on, it's like a whole different energy. Yeah, yeah. They took it off. I'm like, ah, I feel Letting uncomfortable. the real you come out. Like, yo, yo, <laughs> really living your best life. I have um, Somali um, segregated weddings, is where it's at. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing the Somali weddings is. All right, hitting. can you invite me, please? Like, Maybe. Just I'm lost one. Yeah, I'm on it. Anyone that wants to invite me to a Somali wedding, I'm telling you now, hit me up. I'm, I'm on, on it. it. 100. Honestly. Yeah. yeah, East African weddings. I've seen a few memes. Yeah, not memes. <laughs> not memes. Okay, you guys, you need to invite me to more weddings. <laughs> In it, I feel like more. I feel like Kenny and uh, Ty should go to these weddings as well, so you can help <laughs> help, yes. help lessen the ignorance amongst the the white community. <laughs> You're like my Asian. token white friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so I want to understand. Mm-hmm. Do you feel okay? I want to know now. Do you see yourself teaching, obviously, yourself? Like, okay, as an adult, <laughs> let me let me work this it. We've inherited a lot of stuff from our family. Mm. Mm-hmm. As an adult or as a teenager, you start questioning things and establishing yeah. who you are or whatever. You all now know whether you're culturally or faith-led. Where do you see your journey as it stands? I know it's hard to predict because, like you said, as you get yeah. older, it changes. Yeah. yeah. But how do you envision your household to be, like, when it comes to... Like, what, what would you do differently that maybe our parents did? Um, I would definitely, definitely be big on celebrations like Eid, Ramadan. I think people, I think, well, not people, I think um, the majority of first-generation Muslim communities were not, like, I don't know why, we just don't, we're not out here. Like, I see every Christmas, every Halloween growing up here, I'm thinking, wow, the lights, people are out here celebrating, we're getting presents. Did you guys have Christmas the- celebrations at home? No, not at home. But I have Catholic family. So okay. I, I have Catholic and I have Buddhist family. Mm. Um, and um, Christmas holidays, you know me, I'm going to finesse. So <laughs> one day I'm up in Ireland, next day I'm down in Luton. I'm celebrating Christmas here, there, Ireland everywhere. Ireland in very different I said areas. presents though. everywhere. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> because I just, like my parents, I don't think we had the, or they had the facilities or the understanding of, they know you should be celebrating. They know we should go all out, but mm. I just don't think they under really understood how to. Mm. really so um yeah i'll be out here celebrating whatever and then a couple years ago in my household i made a decision to every time uh ramadan comes along every eid i'm out here decorating the house we got balloons we got lights we got presents we're doing the most like that's good we have to because i i know me growing up seeing like christmas for example because it's the biggest um example i just thought raw like why can't, why aren't we doing this? Mm, yeah. And you feel a type of way when you're a kid because you're like, wow, all these kids are getting presents. We had Eidmus. Desi- Eidmus? Don't hey? kill me. <laughs> Christmas and Eidmus. No. <laughs> no, no, But no, you get no, it. No, I'm no. just... Yeah. But now it's a thing where my, well, my siblings are still quite young in it so they can 
have the opportunity to experience that within mm. my household as of right and you, now. And you can, you, you as, can as the eldest can lead that. that. Yeah. Do you yeah. get it? Um, but yeah, that's definitely going to be a thing. My kids are going to wake up excited that it's Eid, bruv. Good. Yeah. Knowing should, that today you're getting presents. Yeah. Today you're enjoying. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not a hundred. What about yourself, Fizz? I think it would be explaining things. Because mm. that's something mm. that I, similar to you, I was raised with the fear of God. Mm. Rather than the love of God and explaining why things are keywords, how mm. they, uh, why, why this practice is the way this is, why yeah. you need to do this, why you need to do that. Mm. Um, explaining things, well, I do, I do it with my little baby brother. So mm. he's he's fifteen now. Damn, yeah, girl. baby. He's been, he's he's been a, fourteen for a minute. He's been fourteen <laughs> for a minute. Oh, no, boy. <laughs> As I said to him when he was Get five and complaining about being called a baby brother, no matter how old he gets. Always, always be my baby. baby. Always gonna be my baby. Say, my sister, yeah, my baby sister. Twenty-seven, big woman. <laughs> nah, that's a baby 15. sister. No, he's still man, my baby brother. Woman. He's always. I said when he's a hundred and I'm dead, he's still my baby <laughs> brother. Uh, <laughs> I'm dead. Hopefully, like, that's quite so you'd you'd want to explain. Um, yeah, I'd love to to explain things in more detail, but that comes down to me educating myself too and understanding those things too and passing that on. Yeah, because a lot of the stuff that I've learned, I'm having to unlearn because it was. Mm not the greatest thing. Yeah. Or like why we do things the way we do. Like, oh, okay, I didn't know this is the reason why that we have to do certain things. Or you were simply mistaught. Yeah. So for example, you brought up that the, the um, example of alcohol. We all know Muslims don't do, drink alcohol. but I was, mean, a lot of households do, but you know. I mean, we, we shouldn't different. be drinking alcohol. Some people do. But it was only through like reading a bit more about it, understanding a bit more about why, and you touched on it a bit. But one of the things that really struck a chord with me was the fact that your prayers are invalid for 40 days. Because mm, it takes 40 days to come out of your system. Sorry, what? Your, yeah, so it takes 40 days to come four, out of your system. Four zero. Four yeah. zero. It, Over a month. Over yeah. a month to come, out of, to come out of your system. In that time. Did God, you know this? Yeah, it takes 40 days for it to be completely out. Out of your system. It's a bit like the, how long it takes for meat to digest in your body. Because like, I think it's like a, a I think it's 30 months. days, yeah. yeah. Hey? So, yeah. Yeah. so in those 40 Red meat, days, yeah, if you were to, if say you were to drink alcohol, I don't know, on the 28th of February, on the 28th of March, your mum passed, uh, God, God forbid, forbid, God forbid, your mum passes away. You're, you're supposedly a practicing Muslim and you've drunk alcohol. Your mum passes away. You're now praying for your mum and your prayers are not going to be accepted. Yeah, Accept? They're not valid. They're, they're not void. valid. And on, it's not just by by the, the, the higher being. The higher being. But it's who? not just the prayers God. though as well. The angels won't, because we, we won't believe there's four angels that are, they that's with every house. person. They won't come to they your house. Pull up to the house. They're not with you, period. They, yeah. they, the four angels that you have, they're gone. It's, it's almost like, basically, it's, it's um, so we believe. You become like a non-entity. No, but it's because it's, it's, it's God's giving you rules and, and like just simple guidance and you've chosen to, I guess, dis be disobedient yeah. and be rebellious against it. So God's like, all right, cool, fair dues, yeah. here you go. This is the one Because even Islamically, into... the politics. But, but, no, but, even, the, but this but is we'll something that... But we'll progress from that point. Yeah, so the, the, po the reason why I raised that point is because this is something that growing up in the West, the temptation to do certain things that are mm. And haram, how it's desensitised. Yeah, and yeah. how it's desensitised is so... Um, it's, there's a lot of pressure on the youngsters. And if I was to have kids and they're going to be exposed, they're going to be out, work dues, Christmas parties, oh, this, that and the other, alcohol. Life. Yeah, <laughs> you're out with your Festival. friends, some of your friends Festival. drink, the temptation is there. Yeah. So if I now explain to my children, rather Podcasting. than going, Muslims don't drink, end of, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm explaining it, they're more likely to retain that and respect it. 100. Mm. And, and to practice When you feel themselves. empowered of knowledge, you want to sort of do that with your chest. Exactly. 100. I agree. So that's what I would do. <laughs> that, what would question? I be doing in my household? You're right. doing it right now, so what is it? <laughs> chilling, man. <Just> chilling. <laughs> chilling like I a swear, boy. I swear, it's like, I just want Caleb to grow up and have. What's your fun. core? What's your core thing for for Caleb? Uh, preparation for the world he's he's about to embark on. Okay, mm. it's not gonna be. Yeah, that's that's the main thing: preparation and being able to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm. That's why my head is at. Mm. So. Fair enough. Um. I personally, you mentioned unlearning behavior. We also have to re-educate ourselves. It's our duty, I duty, think, yeah. as any adult, we have to learn for ourselves. We can't mm -hmm. just say, oh yeah, but our parents taught us this. Yeah. Our parents could be misled. Our parents could have inherited stuff that they've not been able to question because they're not allowed to question. Yeah. We're at a 
we're at a, like I always say every time, we're at a privileged position mm -hmm. where we're able to seek knowledge. We have accessible information. Yeah. We can't Some keep using dodged. our parents as an excuse. Uh, yeah. We Is can't there just something keep saying, specific that you would say, I'm not going to do that. Dip, I'm going to be doing different to what my parents did. Um, yeah, I think, like you said, the, the love for the faith, understanding that God is actually merciful, God is good, God is great. Our parents would say that when they when you read Quran and they'll yeah. translate it, mm. but they that wouldn't be a focal point. No. I, like, my son goes to Eid wearing a thorb, mm, my sure. Eid prayers. My son gets up and prays with me. Mm. He wants to lead the prayers. He excited to be Muslim. That's so it. he first thought... Muslim means speaking Arabic. He went, I don't want a Muslim brother or sister. <laughs> like, why? He's like, they're going to speak Arabic. I'm like, brethren, you're Muslim, you speak Arabic. He's like, a little bit. I'm like, do I speak Arabic all the time? Do I speak English? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, then. So, shush. Yeah. 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 You're ignorant. But I want my child to be very proud of yes. where he's from, but also, first and foremost, be proud of his faith. Mm. Yeah. Um, which I'm doing. It's a very, very hard conscious effort. Mm. Um, but it's something that so far I'm okay with. Like, Well, it know. shows because at, at such a young age, Khalil is. Try, he's being proactive. He is, and he's, he's being, excited. Yeah. He asked me. He asked me stuff like, "How do I say this? What does this mean?" Yeah, and so it sweet. makes me excited. He looks nothing like me, but to know that <laughs> he's got elements of me and mm -hmm. he's got my passion, it's kind of resonating. Mm -hmm. Did you speak Arabic to him from birth? My mum and dad did an excellent job of doing that. Oh, do you know okay. what? It's very, very hard. Even if you speak the language fluent, when your first language is English. Mm -hmm. You automatically like that's yeah. your go-to. Yeah. So you have to consciously go. Bloop. I'm struggling with that now. It yeah. is very hard. Keep them. Keep him around your parents as much as possible. <laughs> my parents don't speak to him in English. Mm, yeah. Literally, they don't. And as a result, my son, I'll ask him anything in Arabic. He'll do it. Yeah. yeah. I'm like rotted. <laughs> I have to yeah. bend down and touch his toes. And he was <laughs> like, okay. Caleb's at a really good age right yeah. now. His mind is a sponge that as you're mm. speaking to him in English, you could be speaking to him in Yoruba yeah. as well. Yeah. But I think I think <laughs> it's about, yeah, I, I want my child to be very proud of his identity, very proud of his heritage, um, like race-wise, ethnicity, but also just to be a very proud Muslim man. Yeah. Mm. And, and and hope that, you know, his energy like vibrates to the community and his people and he, everything that he does and says, he's a, he's a role model. Mm -hmm. No pressure, obviously. Obviously. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's all it is. And I think I just want the household's constant positive energy and not just constant repercussions. Yeah. Mm. Like, I think there's a lot of repercussions in my household. Mm. And my, my son, believe it or not, I genuinely believe my child will get a beating. You know I'm, I'm yet to beat my child. You know, the more that I think about it, the more that... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Ever had her utensils lined up ready? I had it ready! Yeah, Choose your weapon, sir. Yeah. For real. But Run, what I was going to say, the more mm. that I think about it, the more that I've picked up in both the households, tell me if I'm wrong, yeah? I feel like faith was a mechanism of discipline. Yeah. Yes. And that's why you guys grew up seeing faith more from a ne negative as aspect, mm. because like any child, you're gonna re uh, rebel. Whether but also we weren't we weren't raised in a liberal house. My I wasn't raised in a liberal yeah. household. My mm. household was very like authoritarian. Yeah, yeah. soldier vibes. Yeah, and there there was it was a it was a case of do as I say, don't don't question it. But yeah. that, that's that's how yeah. certain people try and teach discipline. Yeah, yeah. But I think the only things I'm I'm mindful of the time, but the only thing I'm I will say that upsets me is when people choose to reject faith yeah. as a whole yeah and um as a result of like their parents mm. or stuff behavior. that they've seen in the media and yeah. anything yeah. yeah like whether it's the media whether it's even faith whether it's other things mm. that you've given yeah. up on like whether a lot it's of your young culture people will say now they don't want to get married they don't want to have serious exactly. relationships because they I think me and ty had failed. this conversation like not too long ago you see so much fail around you that you you have a fear and i think this is about learning that yourself and, and experiencing life and choosing to not do things the way our parents did it or what we witnessed around us and go do you know what that's their problem that's yeah. their case and that's separate to me yeah. i know who i am my foundations and i'm gonna ensure if it's a marriage situation that i will you know do what i can to understand the, the hardness of a marriage mm -hmm. the beauty of a marriage and obviously like don't let my parents failed attempts I would never want my son to go because my mum and dad are divorced. Mm. I now hate marriage. I think if I stayed in a in a toxic environment, he would have been like, nah, I don't want to do marriage. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's also important to realise that as well as we're individuals and people, so are your parents. Yeah. yeah. And I think we forget that. And they're human. Yeah. They're, they're human, regular, regular they people. Mistakes. There's no rule book to being a parent, let alone being a parent that's come to a foreign land, don't speak First the language, generation. try to yeah, learn. Yeah, sure, it's yeah. long. So I think if... Cut we them need slack. To, yeah, we need to cut them some slack. And to yeah. be fair, look at us. I think they did a pretty good We're job. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Like, yeah. So 
yeah, you know, everybody's human. We're all people. It is what it is. On that note, Miriam, thank yes. you so much for joining us. Today. Thank you for having thank me, guys. We appreciate you. Thank you for being on time and running in white people's time. <laughs> it means a lot for, to me. For the first time ever. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed, late guys. Everywhere. More time. You're like, yeah, yeah. Well, no, we're not. Okay, when Ran is with me. Okay, okay. So we have to shout out your 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 management in the back. There you go. Not you. No, no, no credit. Shout out. I don't even want the credit. I don't want the credit. She could take the credit because me by myself, you catch me in two days. I won't even make it. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the way. I'm on the way. Yeah. Do you get it? I'm still in bed. <laughs> Two oh. days later. <laughs> That's me. You're that meme. That's me. Where can people find you? Um, just remind everyone again. Okay. YouTube, Conscious Conversations. Instagram, Official Miriam. Um, also the podcast page with bc.conversations podcast. Conscious Conversations on Spotify and Apple. And and your stuff is amazing. Um, I've it. been very honoured to be on two of your episodes. Of course. And I've watched your stuff. Yes. Um, so yes, if you haven't watched it, please go on hers. Um, I'm sure there'll be a tag on one of my posts as well. Um, and you guys, would you like to do outros? I'm Fizz. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we've lost our little You were supposed to go mojo. first. Yeah, you were bang, bang. Little, uh, intro, I, I'm, I'm, No, I'm going to switch up, you, innit? You do it good, but then when it gets to Ben and then me, we're like... <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm I'm Fizz. <laughs> you can find AKA me on AKA the Bengali bombshell. Oh, oh no! God. Can we veto that name? That's no, a terrible name. No, that's it's terrible. when you start giving yourself other, other hype names. The Bengali no, bombshell, that's a mate. Terrible. That came in a DM. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm definitely saying that from now on. No, please don't. Oh, Bengali God. bombshell. No, that's terrible. <laughs> that's actually terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to acknowledge. Girl, you're your bombshell and the hold the pun. Really? Ruining my tingle. Trying to oh, do he's outside. trying to do his little segment, bro. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm what's going on? I'm out here. <laughs> uncle Ben. It's your uncle's favourite uncle, Uncle Ben. A.K.A. Ben is the end. A.K.A. Cheese and Bread. What she said, innit? <clears throat> um, since he's become a father, he's now Bill Florence Hill, Mother Trucker, and Cheese and Bread. Um, Bad I'm Hebs, as well. A.K.A. Mama Hebs. A.K.A. That's it. I'm the biggest catfish in London. I don't know. But guys, catch us on Instagram, YouTube, um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of the podcasting platforms. We're on it. We're on, on it. What she said. Love to see Subscribe, it. like, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell their nan, the auntie and the